we were discussing the other day about the middle way mm. was between asceticism you know the two extremes of, of mm. but the middle way is the enduring of thoughts uh, yes yeah that's certainly the way to cultivate the middle way the way to cultivate yeah. the because the sensuality like sure. from the context of thoughts from the point of view of thoughts and mental images that appear in people's minds sensuality would be acting out of thoughts immediately so you have a thought towards something you just act out of it there is no reflection there is no sense restraint there is no consideration more or less so to, to that that kind of that's pretty much what defines uh, sensuality and as the Buddha said it's the th it's the man's thought lust and desire in his thoughts that makes his sensuality be there it's not the beautiful things in the world so the nature of thought is sensual thought but it's also it's paired with that just um, immediate acceptance of it immediate delight in it immediate welcoming of it uh, which means immediate acting towards whatever you're thinking of and the opposite way would be like say you see sensuality as a problem so what do you do then well you try to deny the thoughts so you see that yes when these thoughts of sensual desires arise in me I act out of it so what if I were to not have those thoughts and then you, you want to prevent them from arising and that's now more aligned with that self self mortification the ignoble way of of just self torture because it, it can it cannot bear the result you want that's why it's ignoble mm -hmm. that's why it does not it's not wholesome not that trying to resist thoughts is bad but see denying thoughts requires you to resist thoughts but it takes it even further now it overshoots in the other way because one thing is you resisting the thoughts means exactly that allowing them to endure but resisting you acting out of it and another thing is now to oh I mustn't have these thoughts to begin with now that's you overreaching that's not up to you and that's why either giving into those thoughts or trying to deny them you're equally ignorant you're either bound with sensuality or self modification you're bound with the same domain of bait as the Buddha described, bait that Mara lays down for you. So how do you then not go into either of these extremes? And, and see, by the way, it's not really, I mean, it can result in extremes, sensuality and self mortification but in itself it's relatively subtle in the beginning. It's not like, you denying thoughts is not exactly extreme, isn't it? Yet it already partakes in the way of extreme self mortification shares the same nature. It's rooted in that. So all the acts of self-mortification that would come uh, later on in someone's practice of such kind would be all sharing the same principle in common. Denial of the arisen thought. I mustn't have it. And even the Buddha was the same initially when he was trying to find a way out. And, 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 and there's no end to that. You can always get more. and You can always do more and do more. To the point when the Buddha said, well, what if I were to stop breathing? So, in other words, I will kill myself and I will not so so to not have thoughts so to not have unwholesome states arise but then he does well actually that's that's not going to help that's not going to work so th the reason why I'm saying this is because people kind of tend to dismiss oh yeah self mortification asceticism or, or extreme sensuality those are extremes as long as I don't commit to those extremes I'm in the middle no if you're already either accepting your thoughts or denying them you're not in the middle so the middle way is the way that basically can discern the arisen thought, not act, out of, not, act, not act out of it, and not try to get rid of it. Which means the mind already needs to have been developed sufficiently to be able to allow the thought to endure without jumping into the action on account of it. So sense restraint needs to be developed beforehand, virtue needs to be established, because that will prevent you, that will give you a certain space to not just automatically act out of it. But yeah, you're not you're not denying those thoughts. No, okay. that's so that's what I mean. Like it kind of it's a natural progression. First you see sensuality is a problem, you want to deal with it, so what you do, you deny the whole thing. But you deny things you shouldn't be denying. And by denying them, you are baited, you're hooked to that bait again. And that's the, the deer herd simile in the Majjhima Nikaya. Oh look, they got caught by b engaging in sensuality. What if we stop and we run on top of a mountain and we don't eat, don't drink, 
but then you can't sustain that you come back and you're caught again and then, and then the third one is the one that finds the, the middle way oh how about, a, about if we don't eat, we eat around the bait we don't eat the bait so we don't do that which baits us into Mara's domain mm -hmm. but we don't sh we don't shun it either because that would all equally makes us visible to the hunter and that's 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 the beginning of that this sermon is um, being able to allow thoughts to endure without welcoming them because thoughts arise on their own that's the whole point so you thinking you can deny them already implies wrong view whereby you think you are in charge of those thoughts you're responsible for their arising no you're responsible for their acceptance you're responsible for delighting in them you're responsible for acting out of them so if you don't do these things and thoughts are still there that's not on you but the reason why people then still want to get rid of those thoughts is because it's unpleasant to allow thoughts to endure without acting out of it. It's easier to act towards sensuality and it's easier to act towards denial. The hardest thing is to allow it to endure and not act out of it. Because yeah. mm -hmm. it can endure for days. And you're not acting out of it and it's there. The whole pressure, emotional charge, it's all there, but you're not acting out of it. It's easier to just get angry or get lustful, just say yes or say no or act express yourself quickly deal with it whatever it is it's easier but again the only reason you're doing it is because the endurance of the thought is first and it's still there which means doesn't matter how much you give in try to deny it you always do it on account of that which you're not in control of that bothers you which is endurance of the thought mm -hmm. in other words it's futile all of your efforts to act they, they come out of it as a reaction to it are futile if you really want to deal with the painfulness of enduring thought where you're not acting out of it, well, you need to allow it to endure and then understand it. See it clearly, yeah. understand it. Yeah, that's why the way I said there is no wisdom arising on a kind of sensual behavior and there will be no wisdom arising on a kind of that self-mortification, asceticism behavior of just saying no to everything. There will be no wisdom. Pushing away or denying. Yeah, because you just lock into a direction and that's your principle of action. If it arises, I just say yes, yes, yes. Or now you go the other way. Whatever arises, I just say no, 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 no. And then you conflate that with the idea of purity and then you feel even extra superior on account of your great determination that you eat once a month or something. Nobody can do that apart from you. You're so special. So you realize even the unwholesome states that you wanted to abandon, the conceit, ego, pride, get amplified. And you haven't actually abandoned it. So the endurance of the thought, whatever thought, whatever the thought is, whatever the state of mind is, you have to allow it to endure. And but that means not act out of it yeah. and not try to get rid of it's it. It doesn't mean maintaining. No, no, you don't need to keep it in. Yeah. No, that's again, that's not, it's not up to you. But Just ask yourself, yeah. the state of mind you have now, whatever mood you're in, did you create it? Did you have a, pre did you like press an internal button that produced it? Not at all. But that's what that's what kind of what you would think. But that's the that's kind the of feeling. The, of it, yeah, so that's speak. the implication. That's the people, the view behind. It's kind of oh, this is mine. Yeah. Which is exactly why it's like oh, this is mine, so I engage with it. Or when you start seeing problem with that, this is mine, so I will deny it. But the fact is that that's still there. You realize oh, I, I can't even deny this. So the problem is not in this that in in, in those mental states or thoughts arising. The problem is in you acting out of it, either towards. Or against. Either way, you're affirming their grip over you. So, you're trying to wiggle out of it. So, that will be the beginning of the middle way. And that's exactly like what um, in the suttas, the, the grasping the signs of your mind, Chitta Nimitta, what it is. Like grasping the signs of your mind for what it is, the mind, for its nature, the way it has arisen, the way it endures. The reason why people cannot grasp the chitta nimitta, a prerequisite for the right view, is because they either act or deny against their own mind. So the mind of sensuality, they're fully projected to a central action already. Or the mind of sensuality, fully projected to a denial of the entire mind, of all the, the, the root of the thoughts, not just this specific thing. So you're either underdoing the restraint or overdoing the restraint. But you're not doing the restraint properly either way.
because you'll be watching your breath say, you'll be watching your breath it's like some people you know doing this meditation just mm. watching the breath and then a th- lustful thought comes up mm. no I must get rid of this I must watch my breath I must watch my breath so that I don't have lustful thoughts mm. and if I just keep on watching my breath watching my breath as hard as I can yeah. then whatever eight hours a day <coughs> I, I don't have any lustful thoughts. Yeah. Because I'm just watching my breath. Yeah, that's like the, the deer herd that runs on top of a mountain. They're not experiencing any temptation from the bait mm. for a period of time. But they're not growing uh, wisdom in regard to overcoming the bait altogether, which means the food will have to run out. In other words, you can't sustain meditating, breathing eight hours a day, watching. Something will have to pull you one way or the other. You'll get sick, you have to deal with things, and then you're back to where you were before. There's no wisdom there creating like elevated ground for you right. to be on in regard to all these things they lust, were pulling you around lust thought comes and you don't have time to watch yeah. you can't you watch yeah. your breath because all the stuff's going yeah, on yeah the circumstances yeah. The, the, the suitable sur- environment that was helping you not engage with the bait is gone yeah. so in other words your freedom from lustful thoughts was only circumstantial yeah. and now circumstances have changed and you're back to it and by the way, there is no problem if if, uh, if you want if you have lustful thoughts while you're breathing and you choose to attend to the breath. You can do that because it is a matter of choice. Will I choose to attend this or choose to attend that? But the problem is when people choose to attend breath at the, like with the view of denying the thought. Not like, I will attend my breath and allow this thought to endure in the background of my mind because it has a reason on its own. I didn't invite it. I will allow it to endure as long as it wants. I will not give my attention to it. I will attend to my breath. But not... I will attend to my breath so this thought is gone I do away with it it doesn't exist mm. no now you oh, so you're actually engaged with it and your breath is actually secondary because this is now your concern that thought and that's like when the Mara comes in the suttas and tries to tempt the Buddha can't chase him away he can't kick him and, and tell him you know get lost he can just not provide him a basis to, to, to latch on and then Mara leaves you on his own so literally thoughts of sensuality come and like, like flies fly around you but they have nothing to land on unless you provide something suitable for them to land on mm-hmm. so when, when even in the system it says you don't, you don't pay attention to these thoughts you don't do it at the expense of denying their presence it's, it's because they're present you don't give them your attention I wouldn't have to not give you my attention if you're not here so if I'm instructed to not give you my attention means I know you're here and for the duration of that endurance of your presence here, I will not give you my attention. But not, I will not give you my attention, I will not give you my attention, I hope he disappears. No, that's wishful thinking now. Mm. And you're actually still denying the presence of that thing that you had nothing to do with. And that's how Mara gets you. That's still his domain. Affirming or denying is his domain. So you said it's being economist. Well, that will be the outcome of that. Mm. If you cultivate this long enough, Mara will leave you alone. The, the pressure will not be able to overwhelm your mind. But not if you cultivate um, sense restraint in itself. That's necessary basis for you to see the middle way. For you to stop denying, trying to deny thoughts and states of mind, but allow them to endure, and then basically you become uh, stronger than those states of mind, so to speak through having them endure and not acting out of it not losing your sense of restraint and not trying to deny it so you're cultivating the middle way mm-hmm. and then yes you will become economists imperturbable because that's what you've been cultivating but, th- but those states will dissipate so to speak there will be less Again, uh, pressure yes on but uh, that, that's, that's, like a, that's, a, that's a side effect so to speak that's a, that's a your concern is to you not be moved by those states even if they last forever. That's the attitude that you should have. Not like I will deny these states forever after or I will indulge in these states forever after. No, I will be immovable in regard to these states. As the Buddha said, be like water, be like fire, be like, uh, be like earth and wind that doesn't get affected by things that sort of come through. And you don't practice... Like, I mean, right, 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 right. if you want to make that an actual factual practice... Yeah, you, that's done so on the level of the mental states. What mood am I in? How is that mood affecting my action? Am I lashing out? Am I binge eating? Am I seeking sensuality? Am I irritable? Am I, ang- am I expressing it? Am I being perturbed by these states of mind? 
means I don't see the mind for what it is, I don't see its nature for what it is, I am not grasping the sign of the mind correctly, the mind of a phenomenon, basically, sign of the mind is a sign, oh, there is an enduring state of mind. I didn't invite it, but I'm certainly not delighting in it or accepting it. Seeing it for what it is, an enduring phenomenon. And you start seeing that, that's it, you, you're already understanding mind to a greater degree. But if I start doing this with the idea that, oh yeah, so that I won't doing have what? Any, watching my mind so that I can get rid of all well you will thoughts. inevitably start doing it in a wrong way as well yeah. but that's why the it reading starts, the suttas so. the no, yeah you have to start somewhere and then don't take your start at face value take it with a pinch of salt so to speak so whatever you're doing even if it makes sense okay let's see let's test this in a sense let's let's reflect even more let's see how I'm perturbed I am when these things arise and so on or if I think certain thoughts um, and then, then you'll see but yeah, you would have to start somehow, and um, when when you do start, you're gonna be starting pretty much like on your own terms, as I often say, which is a wrong way to start. But you have no other way than that. <coughs> so you have to start somehow. <coughs> but if you recognize that, wait, it's not me contemplating this mind, seeing oh my mind is like this, and then I'm I'm sticking to observation of it. It's more like just finding the state of mind that's already there. And that's already effortless. That's already p proper satipatthana. So no, I'm, I'm mindful of my mind. I am depressed. I am elated. I am, my mind is lustful. My mind is angry. No. You start like that, but you want to remove yourself from that equation. Are you doing this observation? Because why are, you, why are you even able to... Oh, my mind is lustful. My mind is angry. Good. Why are you able to do that? Because the mind is already that. You find it there already enduring as such so seeing oh so whether I'm doing this or not doesn't matter what really matters is just not lose that peripheral sight of the state of mind that's enduring whether I look at it or not look at it or try to outrun it or delight in it ah it defines my whole experience as a whole my whole behavior so you want to see it on that peripheral level not on the level of I'm attending to my mind which is kind of impossible so if you've got a peaceful state of mind this is the same don't be negligent about in regard to it mm. don't 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 lose it don't don't distract yourself from it don't ignore it oh yeah okay now it's peaceful have i created that peace did i create that state of mind do i know where it came from do i know when it's going no i'm subjected to it it's agreeable now okay so let me then not delight in agreeability of the state of mind because when that agreeability changes i will not be affected by it so then equally when the state of mind that induces is disagreeable you're not delighting in it which means it's not affecting you as much which means you don't need to be fretting over and I must get rid of this I must deal with this because it's not affecting you because that was the only problem the problem wasn't that the state of mind arose one way or the other the problem is that you were affected by it and you were resisting it so not being affected by whatever state of mind not being affected yeah. by it. And then seeing that the state of mind are discerned on a peripheral level, not on the level of your attention. I'm looking at my state of mind. Mind is on the level of sense organs, not sense objects. And what people attend is sense objects. I am attending to sight, sound, smell, taste, touch, thoughts. But the state of mind is what's peripheral to that. If you have angry thoughts, means you can't have angry thoughts if the mind is not angry. Mm -hmm. So you recognize, okay, I have angry thoughts, which means the state of mind that endures is a state of anger, which is going to feel ambiguous initially, because people want to have things clear-cut where they can attend to, which is the result of an untrained mind. But training the mind to the sight of the peripheral image of the mind is what developing Chitta Nimitta is, seeing the mind for what it is, without over-attending it, without under-attending it and forgetting and about it. If you cannot see that, then you cannot endure it. Exactly. Exactly. If you if not seeing that means you're already not enduring. Means you are either resisting it or, indul or, or, or overly welcoming it. So you can't endure those yeah. thoughts. You can't endure the mind if you can't see them. And if you have a view that you shouldn't be enduring it, you will never see it. Mm. As in, if you have a view that you should be denying those thoughts that represent the state of mind behind them, you will not be uh, um, able to even endure it because your view is to not endure it. I must get rid of this. Or if habitually you just have a state of mind that you immediately just act out of again you're not enduring it you're doing it because you can't endure it mm -hmm. so yes the first and foremost 
even if you cannot attend properly in that peripheral manner to your state of mind, the only way you would be able to do so if you start enduring whatever emotional mood you're in. Not get out of it, not try to get rid of it. Well, potentiality is bad. Yes, it's very bad. So you don't act out of it, you don't welcome it, you don't delight in it. That doesn't mean you go out and try to remove these thoughts that are there. Because that's impossible. You that means you're terrible. engaging with it. You want to basically be immovable in regard to that which moves you. Not get out and remove that which moves you. That's impossible. Because mm. how can you go out and move that which moves you without being moved? Without moving yourself? Mm. You can't. So I want to be movable by removing, making effort to remove that which moves me. Well, then you're not immovable. Because you've been moved. Because you have to go and move and move this away. Yeah. Which you're trying to get rid of. So the only way to become immovable, imperturbable, as the Buddha would say in the suttas, is is to then stop interfering with that which perturbs you and actually stop being perturbed by it while it's there. So you're perturbed by it by acting out of it. You're perturbed by it by trying to get rid of it. So when the Buddha said to Angulimala, he says, stop running, stop running. Uh, no, he said it to the Buddha. Stop running. Uh, yeah, he said. And, uh, and yes, I stopped. I stopped moving. Yeah. Yeah. You, you yeah. the one that's. Running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the one that still moves. Hmm. So allowing thoughts, state of mind to endure. If they're pleasant, endurance will be manifested by you not acting towards that pleasure. If they are unpleasant, the endurance will be manifested by you not acting or trying to get rid of that displeasure. And you see, sense restraint is already developing that principle. That's why you start acting beforehand, being sense restrained and virtuous, and then you actually get to understand the principle behind it. <coughs> Which result, results by understanding of it will result in immovability. But that would have not been possible if there was no behavior of sense restraint being performed beforehand. Wildness, yeah. running around. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what middle way is. The immovable. Yeah, the complete immovability in the face of any phenomenon or state of mind that arises. Mm-hmm. And you can't ask for more. You don't need more. <laughs> 